I don't know how to write cuneiform. <laughs> Gives a flying. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Well, my name is Irving Finkel and I'm a curator in the British Museum and um, this afternoon I'm going to be talking about how to impart some knowledge of cuneiform writing to people who are blissfully unaware of how it works or even what it stands for. I'm not actually doing this for the first time because um, there was a chap called Tom I ran into on the um, steps of the museum with a table and some clay and we had a chat and in point of fact we had rather a good time, made a lot of progress. That was quite an interesting thing and many people around the world now know how you can do this sort of thing if you want to. So with that behind me, with that sort of experience, it seemed it might be worth sort of on home ground seeing if we could find some other person uh, selected at random from the passers-by to see whether they too might grab some uh, understanding of the, the rudiments of this and make a little progress just to cheer us all up. So we're very lucky to have with us this afternoon, Mr. Um, um, sorry, I don't think I remember the name. No? No, no. Um, very nice to see you um, again. Um, yes. Um, yes. Uh, Nick. Nick. Yes. Oh, didn't we make a film together before? I remember I, that. Yes, yes, quite yes, a few, yes, actually. Yes, I remember. <laughs> anyway, let's get down to the point. So, as you know, the um, <coughs> Mesopotamians wrote in cuneiform on clay, and rather fortunately we have a couple of cold, slimy slabs here, one each, as yes. our kind Ooh, of... Very cold. Exactly, as our working basis. Good? Yes. So you're with me here? Nice, nice and flat. Then you take um, an example of the well-known Babylonian species of lolly, because the thing is so old that the actual lolly thing is gone, so all we've got left is what might appear to be the dry and pointless stick. But this is the thing we need. If you're really attentive and do really well, it might be that somebody buys you a lolly as a reward. This is the first point which should comfort you in your state of panic, that although this fascinating and demandingly intellectual sheet before you does look rather intimidating, all of these cuneiform signs are made up of three components. That's to say, component one, component two, two and yes, yes uh, I knew you would. Yeah. You see, that's how marvellous it is. So, <clears throat> broadly speaking, and I want you to follow me closely yep. here. <clears throat> With a pen? Using this pencil, I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Excellent. So, this is the components. You have the possibility of writing a upright or vertical wedge. Yes. So you will see on your sheet, lots of these things have vertical wedges like this one here. Excellent. Okay. Then the second thing is you have to have a horizontal one, which is like these here. Mm -hmm. And the third one is what we call diagonal, from the Greek diagonal meaning diagonal. And here you will see an example, if you can, right this that. Merc. Yes, I think there's one there. Oh yes, there's a piece of paper. Yes. Um, that's a point. That, that, Probably that, the that one I'm going to get. So, the process to produce these three things involves two principles. Firstly, your lolly stick. I'm not saying in any way that this is exactly how they did it, but right. this is a simple way which has the same results. Okay. So you rest it on the forefinger, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four. Yes. Long, yes, like that. And then you hold it firmly with the thumb. Yes. Anchoring it in position. Cool. If you apply it in a vertical position, but press the left hand edge in, Yes. It displaces clay with a kind of oh, okay. head. Right. And you can do long or short, and you can do with a large head or a small head, depending on the application, but basically a, a vertical mm -hmm. positioning of the thing, pressed into the clay and displacing the body of the clay, leaves behind a vertical wedge. Okay. Exactly. Very good. So that's your first upright wedge, and a very fine pair, if I may I say so. Oh, yeah, I don't think they're bad. But the, Let's not go to your. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Um, you now have to consider the second application or the mm -hmm. horizontal, where you maintain this rigid position that we've adopted in the yes. first place, and then we go <coughs> through that number of degrees. Right. Okay. Marvelous. Did I, I don't know. Should I? Should I have made the noise? No, it's not. I, I thought it would focus your attention. Ah, well, I mean, it um, did, but then I got very distracted. Oh, sorry. Well, so I won't do it this, this, this. So you're keeping it yes. flat. Yep. And you're turning it mm -hmm. um, in such a way that theoretically you could lay it flat. Mm -hmm. like okay. You don't want to do that. Again, no, you, you want, want to use this under edge to yes. displace clay to make a horizontal wedge. 
Okay. I don't think I'm going to get this one right. I'm certainly, I'm very confident. Uh, no, it felt bad. No, it was, I mean, it's okay. It's you not don't as... actually have to make a whole through the tablet. That's the whole... <laughs> okay, fair matter. enough. It's, um, there's nothing wrong with enthusiasm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. got a kind of grey look to it. It feels like stone. Maybe I'm, I'm taking the wrong kind yes, of... Yes, and I yeah. think the bleeding will probably stop short. Yeah. So we've got the old horizontal down. Yeah. Right? Okay. Then we have number three, or the diagonal. Yes. Now, this is something I have to explain carefully without sound effect. If you have your stylus in position, mm -hmm. if you imagine taking this corner only, yes, right. Now I'm going to stick it into you. You see, okay, it seems yeah. to go in rather well, doesn't it? Yes. It really does, yes. right? Did yeah. that hurt? Um, no. no, but let, I could let me try it. again. <laughs> um, um, no, I think the I'd point rather. is, if yes. you press that sharp corner into the clay at that angle, yeah. it leaves behind it okay. one of those. Just try it. If you yeah. dip the corner in, yeah. And display and take it out. Yeah, uh, it's a bit rubbish. I've got two lines. Oh, that's because you wobbled. Yeah, there's no it's... room for any wobbling. Uh, it's very square. What am I doing wrong? As in, like the end is a bit, it's a bit rubbish, right? Maybe okay. you've got a rubbish stone. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, but if I get it wrong with this one, then it's proof that no. I was just rubbish. No, this has obviously been wobbled by an amateur you see, <laughs> immediately. So you've got control of these three possibilities. I've definitely got control of two. So going on from there, if our name is Asher Barnipal, it might be a challenging and interesting possibility to write that in this original script. Yes. I mean, this is already for some some students something of a challenge in its own right. You know, the first phrase, the first word, perhaps. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, what do you feel? I, mean, I don't want you to feel in any well, way intimidated or crushed or inadequate or humble no. or, or deflated or let down. No, this or is a very um, or anything that will make you feel really a very comfortable or, scenario yeah, to be yeah, in. I enjoy yeah, how yeah, much yeah, smaller yeah. my desk is than yours, and the fact I that I can't move my well, legs. Didn't and, want to mention that. But no, it is um, rather noticeable if you look at generally, it. Generally, I'm quite comfortable. So yes, that's fine. So we have to discuss rather carefully what this name means and what yes. it consists of. Okay. So this is an interesting thing about these ancient Mesopotamians is that their names meant something. Okay. Now, of course, if you know enough about the history of names in this country, they all mean something, but mm. most people have no idea anymore what they mean and they think they're just named. So what is your mean name? Or well, your name? I have no name. idea, it's just a name. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let, let, let's say that um, we're talking about Asher Barnipal. Just put this on the blackboard for the people at the back. Yes. Okay, that's Asher Barnipal. Yes. So in the Assyrian language, mm. but still written with pencil, um, it consists of three parts. Okay, Asher, Barney, and Pal. Cool. And this here, Ashur, is the name of the god. So in ancient Assyria, the national god um, from which the name Assyria obviously derives was called Ashur. He was the chief god of the pantheon. I was going to say, because they do have more than one, don't they? Dots. Yes. Bucketfuls, but... in fact. So um, this guy's name is constructed like many Mesopotamian names, with such and such a god did such and such a thing. Okay. So that's why they're all so intelligible. Mm. Anyway, leaving that aside, yes. um, we have the god Ashur, and then Barney means creator of, or to put it more plainly in English, creator of, mm. and then a son. Okay, so he's quite literally son of Ashur. So Ashur is responsible for this creation of this male baby. What we need to establish is the cuneiform signs with which this name is written, right. and then how to write them. Okay. And so how do you go from English to n not English? And this bit's the English, remember? Yeah. And yep. that bit's the not. not. Okay. Yep. Fine. Cool, it's excellent. So On it. great the way you I really feel like I don't think I'm really good there. This. Yeah. It's so encouraging. Yeah. Okay, um, so first thing is this. Yeah. Um, some of these signs pronounce the, sign, the sounds of the words, right. and some of them have a different function. So the very first sign in this name, to write Ashur, mm. is another sign which means God anyway. It's what we call a determinative. Okay, cool. So it's not so, AS, which I, th I thought I jumped ahead because I found AS and I thought that was going to be the would, first bit of the name, but it's not. I understand that. Yeah, Many but, people would have done it. So this symbol here, which yes. you see, is a vertical and two horizontals. 
Excellent. Are you, are you now telling me that the cheat sheet you gave me for comfort is now meaningless? Is, is, this, is this on here, or is this, is this, a, is this a separate one? The, the, most of the signs that we'll be discussing here are on there. But oh, okay, thought, but this one in particular I thought not. this would be helpful for you. Oh, no, 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 I mean it is, thank you. Left field in a supportive sort of way. Yes. Then we have two signs. One looks like this, and one looks like this. So, this one here is ash. And ash is a single horizontal wedge. Okay. And this one here is sure, which is this sign here. So, these are three signs for part one of the name. We'll just break here for an advertisement and we'll be back in five minutes. See you soon. Theme tune. Do, do, do. Tickets for the BP exhibition, I am Ashurbanipal, King of the World, King of Assyria, vary in price between £17 and absolutely free. £17 for adults, £14 for 16 to 18 year olds, £14 for students with a student card, £14 for persons with disabilities, and absolutely free if you're under 16. Feeling past it? Sad you're now too old to get in for free? Never fear! British Museum members get into every exhibition for free! Yes, absolutely free! Book your tickets now at https colon forward slash forward slash www.britishmuseum.org forward slash what's underscore on forward slash exhibitions forward slash ashurbanipal.aspx And now we can do what people do on television. Mm. Right. Before the break, we explained to you about cuneiform writing and we told you that cuneiform writing was written with stylus. They do, don't they? They recap the whole... They do. I thought you were doing a fantastic job. As well. I mean, I feel like we should have another break and then come back to you recapping we can the recap. Keep that up our sleeves. Yeah. Right. So, we've done one. Now we have to do creator of. Okay. So from well, that, can we do it with two of these? No. Or is that... No. <laughs> no. This is why I selected... Stop this work for you, yes. because you are particularly nimble-witted and would never have assumed that one would write Barney with the signs bar and knee on this sheet, <laughs> as if, you know, as Of course if, I wouldn't, um, that would be, that would be mean, embarrassing. I, it would be let's, so mortifying. Let's say I'm just glad in, that you realised straight away that that was the case. I, I did, but let's, let's say someone watching this had, had perhaps made anyway. the assumption. You think there would be somebody assumption. watching this? You didn't because tell me that there is, oh. there is a bar right here and there is a knee yes. where, it, I've, I've seen it, it's right here. Mm. Um, so, if you had done this mm. in a cuneiform tablet, would mm. someone understand that, or would it be so alien because they hadn't used this that they, they, they wouldn't comprehend it? What they would do is they would say, reading comfortably along, mm. hello, <laughs> hello, someone's written Barney, that's bar, no, I mean, how incredible, who would have done that? And then they would have leapt to some terrible conclusion about the general ability of that scribe. Right. So this is where I think we really have to concentrate. This name, Asher Barnipal, is in a Syrian language. Right. But if you want, when you're writing this script, you can write the Syrian words by using Sumerian signs in the middle of a sentence. Now, before you panic, let me show you this. Are you familiar with this sign here? I have but scant acquaintance with money of any kind, mm. I'm afraid to say, but I gather this means... It's a, a dollar sign. Excellent. So, if you have this written on a piece Two of points. paper, you would say... Ten dollars. And if you had this in front of it, you would say... Four ten dollars? Yes, as if you were an auctioneer or something. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right, yes. So, <laughs> I'm trying to understand where, where you would say that, but yes. Uh, yes, yes. Well, see, so the point here is that if you're writing a long sentence in English, you can put this symbol in... Mm. Right. And you don't say four S with two diagonal lines through it. Ten. No. You say dollars. It illustrates the fact that human beings learn much faster when it's something to do with money than with any <laughs> other matter. Right. Okay. So now you've got that firmly down, yep. you will understand that rather than writing bar knee mm. in this predictable but incorrect fashion, we could use a Sumerian sign. Now, we know that it means creator. Mm. So what we're looking at here is the Sumerian word for creator, which we don't read in Sumerian because that's pronounced do. We don't say Ashur do. Mm. We know that do in Sumerian is read Banu in Akkadian. 
Excellent. And it looks like a mad thing, but the truth of the thing is that the whole system is totally insane. I don't see why you should pick on this particular fact. No, I... I mean, it's unreasonable of you to harp on this when everything else about this writing system is totally out of control, and that's why after three and a half thousand years it died out completely. You see, that just illustrates the point clearly. So, <laughs> what does it say about you being able to uh, read it yourself? No, oh, I do. I'm, I'm sorry, I should just. I don't, I don't read this at all. I just make it up when people come in. You just. <laughs> I mean, I'm entirely in your. Oh, sense. yes, I can see this is a. No, yes, one of the. Yes, it's no problem. I mean, they never know better, so it's fine. Then we have to have the sign aptly. So aptly means son or heir. So we have so far not written anything on cuneiform. But, but we're getting there. But we're, we're getting there, and we have written Ashur. Banapli, which is not Ashurbanipal. Oh, that's the point, yes. Well, Asher Ban or Bani Apli is the proper Akkadian name, but he's always called Ashurbanipal, and all these names go through a bit of um, distortion over time, one way or another, but actually Ashurbanipal is, is perfectly acceptable. So, how would you think you might write Apli? I feel like this is a trick question. Go along, come along, you can do it. So I would use at... You would, I knew you would. And Lee. I was certain you would. So what we would have here is a nice, convenient little writing, app and Lee. Okay? And uh, that, that is actually what we're going to do? No. <laughs> of course not. It is theoretically possible that one could, but in fact what we do is something like this case. Mm. Aplu means sun, okay? So we take the Sumerian word for sun, which is a. Ah, yes. We write the a ah and we read aptly. Right. Also, the other interesting nuance, which I'm sure is what you're about to ask me, was, was. if the thing means creator of a sun in English, then what happens about the grammar? I did wonder about that, because this is all, well, at least parts of it are phonetic, and you can do more than one language with it. So, yeah, because that is, uh, I did Latin for three weeks, a genitive. Hmm. So, yeah, how do you, how do you indicate? Well, Whatever. this is how you indicate it. Um, the word for a creator mm -hmm. in Akkadian is banu. Uh -huh. And the word for son is aplu. Yes. In the nominative. Okay. And if you want to say that this is the creator of that, mm -hmm. then this becomes barney. Yes. And this becomes apli. Yes. And these vowels indicate that this is x is the creator of y. Mm -hmm. So when you have a situation of writing in this way, by using a sign which is actually from another language and you have to supply the word in your own script, you have to put it in the right grammatical form. Okay. In... But for a man of your attainments, I think this is I mean, what yes. we call a doddle. I don't anticipate any difficulty okay. there, really. So, um, what we want to do now is to say, I am, don't we? Yes. Okay, well, that's not so difficult. Um, the word in um, Assyrian for I mm -hmm. is anaku. Okay. And in English, you would say A-N-A-K-U. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that in such an inscription, um, one would write A and Na and Ku, and then join them together in your mind. So we can spell that word phonetically. So um, this is where I think you come into your own. Ah, um, yes. See if you can find A and Na and Ku. Excellent. We'll, right. So it's a countdown of 60, 59, 58, 57, 57, 57, 57 Right. Five, a. And things getting to nah. 17, 16. Oh, 15, wait, no, coup. 15, 15, 15. Where are you? Ding! Oh, no, oh bad luck. What happened next, to 60? Next contestant, so please. more time. Uh, no, I genuinely can't find Where Where is coup? I know why you can't. It's because it's arranged alphabetically, and that is something you never quite got down, isn't it? The old alphabet. No, no, but it Remember is to an extent. But, but there's only a car there. There's nothing else around it that says anything about with a K. I, I did realise that. It's just not there. You can see this. Yes. Ah. Uh, ka. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our um, slabs. What did you do? Because I've got quite a few imprints already. What did you do if you had a mistake? Oh, they cut off one of your fingers. So, if you remember throwing your mind back hours ago when we started this. 
yes. a miserable matter. Um, our first sign has to be this sign for God, which is a big vertical crossed by two horizontals. So we would do it like this, right? You press this thing, you remember in position, this will mm -hmm. be the vertical. Bonk. Go. Cool. Right, so. Yeah, go on now. I've just cracked all of it. It's not gonna, I suppose no. it'll give an authentic aged kind I of look. I think it would look aged. Cool. Right, and start over here, because we've got quite a lot of things to fit yep, in. You don't want fair. to start going around the plan ahead. Yes. Right. So one right. vertical. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, I'm all right. Then we can turn to this angle, yes. and we have a um, horizontal that bisects it, like so, mm -hmm. so that the head is on the side of the... And so do you think they would have moved their hands, or is it cheating just to go like that and keep on doing verticals? I think this is a matter of taste. I think it's the movement of the right hand mm. between those degrees. Okay. Which allows you to do everything with maximum okay. comfort. If you start moving the tablet, it is possible, but I, I, I doubt it. So you've got... Mm, okay, I've already... I've that already one sort done. of grows out of the head of the other yeah. one. Yeah, okay. See? Marvellous. So we've done this sign, which yes. we don't pronounce, but it's there, meaning the next bit is a divine name. Yes. So we want to write Ash and Shur. So one long horizontal, quite a fat one, Good. Then we have to do sure. So the way we do this, we have to leave a bit of room mm -hmm. because we're going to need to do that bit. But it's easiest to do the vertical first. So here's our little vertical. Mm -hmm. And then we go plonk, plonk, plonk. Yep. And then... Aha. Cool. Like that. Right, so that is effect. Yep, I got you. So you want it to line up with the top. So effectively, yeah. is it like you're writing in, or you're trying to write in between two lines at all times? Well, or conceptually, uh, the analogy of, of the washing line becomes very, very helpful. Oh, yes. The heads hang from the washing line. Yes. And the next line's heads hang from their washing line. Aha. Right. Okay. Yields. Yes, I think I'm holding the tablet wrong, but... Yes, relax, you don't have to grip it as if you're about to have a tooth out. You can... Lovely, look at this! Ah, that bit wasn't look too bad. Look at this, if Ashurbanipal were here now. Now we have to go to this do, which of course we don't pronounce do. No, no, we don't. Of course we don't. We it's a Sumerian it. word. Yes, no. uh, <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. need to remind you of that. No, 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 not, no. not for a moment. Would you like to see me do it first? Um, I'm going to plop, plop that in there yeah. in that sort of fashion. You know, Excellent. And then we're going to go for a really... Hmm, really um, hmm, hmm. Oh, there it is, there yes. Go. Piece of clay. Um, thing like that. Yep. Oh, it didn't go very far. I can't see anything yet. Uh, ew! There we that, go. Yeah. That's the sort of thing. This one should go on a bit further. And I don't know where that head comes. That's a mistake. I'm going to try and invisibly repair it. I don't tell anybody. I'll no, no. Cut off at least one of my fingers. So this is our do three. Yes. So, okay. Mm -hmm. And then a gigantic one. Wipe it's across it's... the top that doesn't touch it. An expansive gesture. Ah, that was... No, that's stubby. Yeah. Right. What, how do you recommend? Oh, stubby though the critical, I think. No, uh, I don't know. No, right, is that oh, uh, love it. No, cheating? No, but flourish about it, which I think is admirable. And if you could match the dimension, I with really the... do struggle with doing it. I'm all right. Okay. It's almost like this is a skilled thing. Oh, I wouldn't that say I can't that. Do. <laughs> I wouldn't say something that took about six years of intense work to acquire with in any way skill. I mean, oh, no, no, and of course not. No, 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 not a bit of it. So we've done the. this, and now we're going to. Yep, yep, R. Yes. Say so R, yes. It's, it's, I mean, they, they, they do look like tongue to say yes, yes, exactly. Right, so what we have is one big vertical and a couple of small verticals. Yep. Um, should we do it together? What? Yeah. Fun Everybody, all together now. Oh, isn't that gratifying? Okay. That's the best what I've done so far, I think. Yeah, as you're, far warming as up, I... you're warming up beautifully. You're going to be doing this at home. Right, so we've got okay. Asher, Bar and ah! No that's problem. a little, that, that's almost cuneiform. It is, it is. It's got a feel of it about ancient Assyria. Now, Excellent. next thing we're going to do is to um, follow your lead here. Oh, yes. And ironically... I've got to do the same letter again. That's the point I, I was about to make. Yes. I feel like I'm going to run out of clay. 
Are you allowed um, to stop mid-word? No. Or, no. No, that, that, the whole hand comes off at the wrist if you do that. That's really a heinous thing. Right, so... Um, oh, actually, you jumped ahead. Right, cool. Well, I'll mm. just bash it off. Actually, this is not my best calligraphy, I have to say, but it's very difficult to concentrate on one's art when one's constantly having to look down um, <laughs> and, 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 and help a, a, young, a young person striving as you are doing so nobly. Isn't that uh, lovely? There? I actually think this one's okay, despite the fact I couldn't actually draw it. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm just making sure it's fine and just wing it. Of course, now we, now we can subject it to the test. Yes. Which is we we, we pocket them mm -hmm. each, and we go into the Ashurbanipal Pal exhibition, and when no one's looking, we leave them on the floor. See if anyone panics. And see if anybody panics. Sounds. Sounds, sounds good and like a responsible thing that the British Museum definitely would not do. <laughs> um, right, so if you would like to see cuneiform written better than this and possibly of this standard, um, there's loads of it in the latest exhibition we've got on. Uh, it's the BP exhibition, I am Ashurbanipal, King of the World, King of Assyria, uh, which you've now found out how to write some of. Um, if you'd like to go see it, there are tickets available. Uh, there's a link that will pop up just about now on screen, as well as one in the description. Other than that, uh, you've done videos before. Do you want to say, don't forget to subscribe to the British Museum YouTube channel? No, I'll say that, yeah. yeah. Cool, in your own time. Oh, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the British Museum YouTube channel. Thanks, man. <laughs>